Okay, last time we left off talking about the fact that you can't always trust what you see on TV. Many times these film clips are edited for effect. We use the example of the Rodney King beating. Um, then we got off into history repeats itself. <clears throat> the savings and loan scandal, the Keating Five is one of my favorite examples. John McCain and Phil Graham lobbied the Texas Savings and Loan Association owned by Mr. Keating, uh, or they lobbied the, the legislature to remove regulations, allowing them to get into the gambling business. Hundreds of retirees lost their entire life savings to the tune of $140 billion. <clears throat> In the Bush 43 era, McCain and Phil Graham again, I call them the dyma dynamic duo of destruction, did their magic once more, this time on major banks. They deregulated again, uh, doing in the Glass-Steagall Act in 1999, and allowed greed to take over. You know the consequences. Trillions have been lost this time. Failure of free trade religion. Milton Friedman, Chicago School of Economics. Theories of unfettered free trade have failed every time they've been tried. We overthrew Chile, 9-11-1973, to install Pinochet, our well-trained puppet that we put in down there. Made an absolute disaster of their economy. We overthrew Iraq and installed Viceroy Paul Brimmer to do free trade once again. Once again, another unmitigated disaster. A person needs to read a book called The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein to understand completely what's going on these days. <clears throat> now, history repeats itself in strange ways. The book, The Grapes of Wrath, written back in the Dust Bowl era, described the plight of the farm workers that were displaced. They went to California looking for jobs. 500 guys would show up for 50 jobs. The farmers would say, this is what we're paying, take it or leave it. Nowadays, we've got Grapes of Wrath all over again, where our corporations go all over the world saying, this is what we're paying, take it or leave it. Occupations often fail. England failed to preserve its colonies here in the United States. We threw them out. France failed in Algiers in the 50s. They had their own version of the Baghdad occupation. In fact, if you watch the film or read the books about the uh, um, uh, Battle of Algiers, you'll find that it's eerily reminiscent of Baghdad. Afghanistan is another cyclic repetition thing. That's the graveyard of empires. Alexander the Great died there, Rome died there, Russia died there, and we will die there. Iran. We had a good thing going with Iran back during the Truman administration. Mossadegh was developing a very strong democracy. Problem is, he wanted some of the oil proceeds for his own people, and British Petroleum and the American oil companies didn't like that. So we overthrew him. As soon as Eisenhower got in office, bang. We overthrew him, killed him, took the oil, put in a dictator that was horrible. They've hated us ever since. We're now working on installing our own puppet once again so we can get back at that oil. The next area of repetition, a guy named Smedley Butler, who is one of my American heroes, three-time Medal of Honor winner, uh, wrote a book after World War I. His book is called War is a Racket. He detailed how much money the different corporations had made off the war. If he could see the money being made by the war profiteers today, he would be spinning in his grave. It is unbelievable compared to what it was after World War I. So history does indeed repeat itself, and if we don't pay attention to it, we're doomed to repeat it. The simple fact is, uh, Afghanistan and Obama, if he follows the Constitution, he'll turn the thing over to the Congress and say, declare war or get out. I'll talk to you more next time. We'll go into another subject.